The day I graduated college in 2005, I decided to start a rental company. It took a few years until it became successful enough to be my full-time job, but now it's all I do. My hope is to help you by sharing my knowledge. So today's video is about damage waivers and what to put them on, how to apply them and things. Before I do that, let me show you this chair I bought. Bought this chair from a wedding planner going out of business. I got it for 35. I bought two of them, $35 each. Uh, she used them for, you know, sweetheart tables. And I think that one's really gaudy. We do that one for 125. These ones, I'm gonna try to do 35 for the pair. She says they go out all the time for, uh, you know, sweetheart tables for the bride and groom. So I'll throw them in the showroom and see if people got interest in them. Uh, if, if they don't, I'll drop it down to 20 or something. Anyways, damage waivers. We really only do damage waivers on basically the stuff you see behind us, the things that can get broken. And we do it on chafing dishes and we do it on a lot of catering stuff where there's pieces that can go missing. Uh, we do it on the sheet pans because they go missing. So it's mostly just on this stuff behind me and other catering items. And we do a 10% damage waiver. So one of our plates is 50 cents, 10% is 5 cents. If you got a thousand dollar order of catering supplies, you're paying a hundred dollars. Now the damage waiver is like insurance. People will choose to buy it or put it on their order. And if, if the caterer drops 40 plates and they all break, they're covered. If nothing breaks, they don't get the money back. It's like insurance. You buy it, you either use it if you need it. And if you don't, you don't get the money back. So we only do that on this stuff. Uh, I was at the ARA show one year talking to some guys and they were talking about this one company who puts a 10% damage waiver on everything and the entire order. So if they got tent, tables, chairs, lights, dishes, all that stuff, and it's a $10,000 order, they put a 10% damage waiver on it and then it adds $1,000 to the order. And they said, those people are basically unethical and they're crooks because tents, tables and chairs don't get damaged that often. Yes, a tent can get damaged in the wind really badly, but your actual real insurance is there to cover that. Your real insurance is not gonna cover 10 of these breaking. So they're just being crooks. Um, tents, tables and chairs, they don't really break. And if they do, they're usually, you can fix a table, you can fix a chair. Um, sometimes chairs go missing and we give them the opportunity like a week or two to find them and bring them back. If they don't, we just charge them per missing chair. And what I do is I tell them I'm going to get a quote from the company So because chair prices change, prices change. So I'm gonna get a quote from the manufacturer for whatever's missing plus the shipping. I'm gonna send that to you and that's what you're gonna get charged. I'm not gonna charge you beyond that. I'm only gonna charge you what it costs to replace these. So this again, back to the damage waiver, it is optional. It's not a lot of money. If you got a thousand dollar order, it's not a lot of money generally to have a 10% damage, another hundred dollars. If you break some of this stuff, like these are like six bucks a piece. If you drop a bin of these and break 20 of them, you know, that adds up. Uh, and it can end up being more than the hundred dollars. Now the damage waiver is not a way to make extra income. The damage waiver is to be able to replace the things that get broken. One party may break a bunch of things. Another party may break nothing. So that's a wash. But at the end of the year, you kind of see how much was broken and what you brought in on damage waiver. And you kind of see that it balances out. Yes. Yeah, some years you may make more because you didn't, not a lot of things got broken. Some years you may make less because more was broken than the damage waiver covered. But it's not a way to try to squeeze more money out of people. It's just to replace the things that you broke. Like I said, it's generally a wash. It kind of evens out. Over a period of a year, hopefully it's ex an exact wash. Uh, if it's not, then hopefully over a period of two or three years, it kind of just evens out. Um, I, like I said, I do not do damage waivers on tents, tables, and chairs. I feel like you're being a crook if you do that. So with that being said, there are companies who do things a little differently. 
they charge a 5% fee on everything. I'm not sure if they still charge damage waiver and breakable things, but they charge a 5% fee on everything. And, and what that does is, is it buys the customer uh, like a kind of a, like a little insurance policy. Let's say you have a $200 item out. If they paid for the 5% fee on the entire order, if that item goes missing or damaged, then instead of paying $200 to replace it, they chose that 5% fee and they only pay 50% replacement. So they would end up paying $100. I don't know how I feel about this because just me, a lot of stuff doesn't go missing. We miss a few chairs here and there throughout the year. Don't really miss tables. Don't really miss, we don't miss tents. No one's ever stolen a tent. So we don't really go missing. So for me, I feel that would be kind of a crook move because I'd be charging 5% on everything, squeezing money out of people, making a ton of money on stuff, and no one ever breaks or misses or loses something. And if they do lose something, you know, I mean, probably at the end of the year, I only got to spend $200 to replace chairs. So to me, for me, that would be a crook move. But if your area, if people tend to take things or or just don't care about equipment and break things all the time, you know, that might be something you want to offer. Um, I, like I said, I think it's weird for my area, so I can't do that. So we just do the 10% damage waiver on all the breakable things. Chafing dishes, there's lots of pieces that go missing, like the pan go missing or the sterno holder goes missing. Uh, sheet pans, they end up go missing because the catering staff thinks that they're theirs, even though we got them labeled. Uh, so we sometimes show up and are missing a bunch of uh, sheet pans and hotel pans. Uh, cof coffee urns, uh, they have a top to them, they have a base, you know, anything that can kind of go missing, we charge a 10% damage waiver on. Now, in my damage waiver contract, I say it covers any broken item and up to three missing items. Because if, if the damage waiver just covered missing items, then someone could just take a whole rack of dishes home and be like, well, the damage waiver covers it. No, it covers three missing, let's say water goblets. If there's more than three missing, we're going to charge you for the more than three missing. I can't afford to have entire racks just go disappearing, but the broken ones will cover every single broken one, um, but up to three missing. We've never really enforced that because most of the people who rent dishes from us are the caterers. And they are really good about getting things back. Sometimes there is like 10 things missing, like 10 uh, beer glasses, but it wasn't their fault. I know they're not stealing them. It's like they're being placed around the bar uh, or the barn or the event venue or whatever. Maybe someone did steal it, maybe not. Um, but usually we end up finding those later. Like the barn owner will be like, hey, we found a bunch of your glasses. You wanna come pick them up? And we just pick them up next time we're there. So we're not like losing tons of stuff every weekend and we've never really enforced that we've never really had to we found most of our things either going back the next weekend or someone calls and bring them back in so yeah that's damage waiver 10 percent is kind of like the industry standard but check your area maybe it's 15 percent, maybe it's eight percent i kind of feel like i rambled and jumped around so if you don't understand or want me to follow up I'll just put a comment in the bottom and i'll try to answer your question thanks for watching